Times Siena College poll shows that the economy is still the top issue for voters ahead of the midterm elections, now just three weeks away. Take a look at these numbers. 26% say the economy is number one, followed by inflation at 18%. As the White House claims, President Biden has, quote, done the work to halt soaring inflation. Watch this. Who exactly thinks the president is doing a good job on inflation? Because we've got a new poll that finds he receives his lowest job ratings on inflation, net negative 38 points. We understand that there are challenges that are uh, in front of us here in this country. That is why the president has taken action to lower costs. Uh, joining the conversation all morning long this morning is advisor investments portfolio manager, American Ingenuity Strategy, Adam Johnson, and Fox and Friends first uh, co-host, Todd Pyro. Gentlemen, great to see you both. Adam, your thoughts on these issues. Inflation still at 40-year highs. We're waiting on the earnings season to see just how slow things have become for profits as the Federal Reserve raises rates. Yeah, well, two comments, Maria. First of all, the fact that you can actually go out there and try to say that you're, you're, you're doing something to beat inflation. In fact, you're doing a lot to beat inflation, and inflation is not an issue, when in fact inflation is as high as it's ever been. It's crazy. It doesn't make sense, and people know better, which is one reason why uh, Mr. Biden is struggling in the polls. Um, as far as earnings go, Maria, I think it's actually a very different story. And I think corporate America, and I love this story, the resilience of corporate America, and just everyday working people, incredibly powerful. Earnings are not as bad as people think. And if you want evidence of that, look at Goldman Sachs last week. Look at Bank America this week. We're going to get a lot more earnings um, coming up. And I think that's probably the greatest story um, that's not being told, Maria. The two E's of earnings and employment, a very different counter narrative to inflation. Yeah, I think it's interesting, uh, Adam, that the market is rallying as much as it is on earnings news. Even as interest rates creep higher, the Federal Reserve is going to meet on November 1st and 2nd to raise rates probably another 75 basis points. The 10-year is at 4 percent right now. And yet, look at this market. Yeah, well, you know, you look at the futures this morning and we're up. And I think the real story here, um, and this is what I wrestle with as, as, as I have uh, meetings uh, back at the office with the investment uh, team. Uh, do you buy here or, or do you not buy here? And I think when you look at valuation, the S&P 500 trading at about 15 times earnings, you know, Maria, that's historically cheap. So if you have the nation at full employment, um, you have earnings that actually may, may, uh, put up another all-time high. I know it sounds crazy to say that, but they, they may very well do that. Uh, I think you have to buy it 15 times earnings. That is historically cheap. I know okay. we've got inflation that's a problem, but again, if you have the two E's of earnings and employment, I think that's a very strong counterbalance to the inflation uh, story. Todd, it's a different story for individuals. They're facing food inflation up 11 percent, overall CPI up better than 8 percent. And now the administration is warning that the cost to heat your home is dramatically rising. New data from the Energy Information Administration shows that U.S. households are set to pay $931 to heat this winter. That's up 206 or 28 percent. From a year ago, Todd, it's getting more expensive to heat the home as well. well. Welcome to the party, Biden administration. People who had to lock in their price for this winter already, already know this. And I can speak from personal experience. We locked in a couple of weeks ago. It's now up a buck fifty from what it was then. We're starting to get cold in Connecticut. It's already cold in Massachusetts and in Maine and in New Hampshire. They're starting to see the effects there. And it really does explain that chart that you referenced earlier, that polling. Abortion doesn't impact as many people as the economy. The economy impacts everybody. As a result, you've seen those numbers. And yet, July and August allowed abortion to sneak in there because the economy was good. We saw really good numbers in the stock market. That's gone away. Everybody's focus is now the economy, the economy, the economy. And as a result, Democrats are in real trouble over the next three weeks unless something magical happens.